Hey everyone, Scotty Wick here. Um, wanted to do a follow up to the previous um, the previous video I did on how to get found items into uh, VPX. Um, one thing that was you know is definitely difficult about that process is um, in the one I showed I, I did a bus a van and that one is obviously quite easy because it's pretty much got six flat sides. Um, and, uh, and, and that's not terribly relevant to a whole lot of items that we get in there. So a lot of people are having difficulty making the texture maps for things that are more, I guess, a little bit harder to do. So what we have here is a Balrog, um, which I am going to be using for my Swords of Acid. Uh, table that I'm working on and this guy no way that you're going to use that uh, process before and get it to work so what what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to download this 3d model as a DAE uh, for now and I'm going to go through that normal process I did in the previous video if you need to catch up on that you can jump back to um, that video and watch it but essentially what we're doing is we get it down and then we load that and we're going to build the UA, the, the UV map in here. Um, and what I'm going to do is the UV map is going to be set like this. Again, as, as detailed in the previous video, I'm going to switch it to a box. Box is going to give you your six view um, item here as a, as a bitmap image. And again, you come to the point of like, well, how on God's green earth am I going to get these photos? So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for that today. So we have these, uh, we have our six side. We'll save that as a BMP. Again, if you need to see that process, check the previous video. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to leverage a, for this one, a lot of what I'm going to be doing is off Sketchfab um, these days. So... Uh, that's that's generally the place I found the best uh, user and fan submitted items. So this is specifically for Sketchfab. You could do it other ways, um, but for now, this is what we're going to be using. Um, so what we need to do, and the problem with this is getting this exact screen grab of where they had it is almost impossible. So what we need to do is we actually we're going to just import this into Blender. Um, and render it and then we're able to flip to our specific sides so what we need to do first or what I'm doing is I used the blender plugin for sketchfab um, you can just find this if you search for a sketchfab blender add-on uh, you download it and in blender you're gonna go to your edit preferences add-ons and install it via the file so once you have that in there, what you're going to do is you're going to hit in, um, and in is going to bring out your little tabs here, and you have Sketchfab. You need to make sure you log in. And after that, what I did is I just searched for Balrog, and then I found my Balrog there, and I imported it. Easy enough. When it um, when it comes in, it'll most likely uh, be set to your um, your viewpoint shading here. And, uh, and it'll probably be somewhere like uh, like this. So the thing that's nice about this is we see, okay, well, cool. It's actually in the pose I need, right? Because the UV mapper is going to use those coordinates, those base coordinates, um, to build that box. Um, and so this is a great start because, hey, look, we've got the exact pose we need for that angle. Um, and but the problem is, is like here, we don't have it, uh, textured, but what you need to make sure is once you get it in and you have him in there like that, you're going to go up here and switch this to textured, right? So we've got, we now have our texture that you can drop down and you can adjust, um, different aspects of it, depending on how you want to texture it. Um, you can deal with your strength and your blur and, and all the different uh, scene settings and scene lights and all those uh, different aspects that you might want to fiddle with. Um, so feel free to, to do all your lighting as you might like in there. For now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And what I'm going to do here 
is just take a screen grab. So I just use like the snipping tool in this case, and I'm just going to screen grab this, copy that. And over here in Photoshop, I've got my, I've got my bitmap, my four side bitmap open. And what I need to do here is now you can see I have that exact pose. I can just paste these in here and then obviously you got to resize them, um, but you can paste them in here and get your exact snaps and your exact poses that you needed. Um, and so, you know, obviously that's a bit of a process. You have to resize it to get there, but your pose is going to be exactly right, which is awesome. So as you, you, you know, jump to the side, take a photo, jump to the back, obviously you need to close your, your sketch fab window, take a photo, the other side, take a photo. Um, and then you can use your Z to go to the top, take a photo, bottom, take a photo. Um, and then you pull all those bad boys in here. Um, and then you can work on this however you want. What I was doing is I was just going in for quick and grabbing my magic wand at a tolerance of one. So, you know, low tolerance here. And uh, well, this is an extra one. I can delete that. Let's see. All right. So what I do is I just jump in here and I was just dropping out the background for now. Um, pretty easy, just you know, plow through these. You can take it out again. It's only going to actually use the texture wherever there is, um, you know, wherever wherever there is map. Everything outside of that doesn't matter because it's not in the map. Um, and so, what I'm going to do here, and this is you know not perfect, but it gets us to the point where okay. We now have our sides, and you can see we got crunchies in there that we're going to need to get rid of. But I can overlay this again and see, well, that looks pretty good. Um, if I wanted to do it, uh, I could switch to like soft light or however I want to bring that in just to see how my mapping is. And then um, what I suggest doing from that point is switch your background for now. Um, do like a color overlay on that to let's say like something really bright like a red so you can really see your edges and then you can jump in here um, you can turn this off and we can see those crunchy edges now it's really easy you could just do let's say for this one um, this center guy let's say I just wanted to be lazy about it I could go in and select the edge do a select modify feather and feather it by let's say like five pixels. And then if I do an invert or and then I can delete out and just kind of feather it in. I mean, that's pretty lazy. It does work. And honestly, I don't know how many people would tell, but uh, what I would suggest doing is, is, you know, being a little bit more particular and, um, and just kind of get in there with with your delete tool uh, with, yeah with um, with our eraser tool here dropping this down and especially on areas that you care about like this top flame I care about um, you know adjusting your flow here and then just going and taking out your crunchies and even some of these in here that you want to keep um, you know open obviously labor of love here you can do this as long as you want to get your flames and your your crunchy bits gone right but you can see we got a pretty good we got a pretty good thing going here we're able to get get those out of there pretty quickly um and you can make that as as lovely as you want so i jump back out right you can see what we'd be doing there we'd go do it to each side and the flames and um whatever else so we're not going to do that for this um, for this tutorial because we will hell that take forever. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and drop out that background um, here. So now we have our transparent image, and we're going to go ahead and save that. I just do a save for web PNG transparent. 
So we can see uh, we have a transparent PNG. Again, I haven't. This was just a quick hack. So it's got crunchies, but whatever. We're going to save that to our desktop. Um, we'll save it here. I have it saved as, as daemon. Cool. All right. So now we have a texture and it uh, looks pretty good. It's a more complex object, obviously harder to do. Um, we're not actually going to do anything else with Blender. I was just using it to get those poses to match the box that we made from the UV. So I can go ahead and minimize that. We're going to kick open our our table again if you if you don't know how to uh, place your item in here watch the previous video but essentially we've dropped the primitive in there um, I've adjusted it to 90 rotate which is usually what all you're gonna do I upped it to 300 uh, so 3 3x size and then put it 200 off the z-axis so 200 up in the air just to give myself a better look at it um, I've imported my image here, Demon, and then set it to rubber white. Again, that's going to be your best way to, to get to uh, see your colors pop. And then I'm just going to go to table, camera, and light. And so we can see here that it's not perfect. You can see my crunchies and some of the wings stuff and maybe a little bit on the arm was too transparent. Um, so I need to add some more stuff in there. Um, so we've got... We've got some aspects to work on, but you can see here for the most part, especially if this was back, you know, on the table, honestly, for the most part, looks pretty, looks pretty awesome. Um, we got his tail shining in the light there. So basically we just have our little gray crunchies we need to go get rid of, which again, if I just did that feather, it'd be fine. Those would be off there. Um, but obviously we still want our wings to be sharp and and items like that you see we got a good shine on it um so yeah so that is uh the process i'm using and again it's not going to just give it to you perfectly but it's going to get you pretty dang close i mean you can tell that was pretty quick um and we've got an element in here that we can work with we just need to go clean up the images a little bit which you know give an hour and you'd have that done um, so yeah, so that's my, uh, I guess, adjusted process on how to get a uh, more complex 3D item textured into VPX. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.